class, hey, sorry I'm late getting this up. Um, accident one thing after another, and then uh, I hurt my ankle, so now I'm walking with a crutch again. No, cane. We call it a cane. Yeah. Anyway, it always takes time. As you know, we're going to have a lot to talk about. <laughs> um, but this week, uh, first thing is we are finally to the point where we can really enjoy it. This book is just fabulous. And in the second half, he's getting into all sorts of issues that I think are important to all of us. And he's got an interesting perspective because he really traveled around the world and really listened to things. And so rather than being just theoretical, what do we think about the church? It's where are we having problems with the church and how should we think about this or how are people thinking about this that's causing dissension and differences? So I think this section is going to be particularly good for you to start talking about and for us to start talking about the things that we want to talk about. Given that, and also I got an email, oh yeah, you're all trying to get out of town, it's not easy to set up things to be gone for a week, uh, but I don't want us to miss two weeks of class because, you know, we don't have a new assignment for the week that we're in uh, a meeting together. So what I suggest for this week, do the reading, do the initial posting, don't do any discussion. We'll save the discussion, the back and forth, for when we get together, because the discussion goes much better when we get together anyway. So we'll just, uh, but I want to make sure that you've read this and we're ready to go when we get together. So if you just do your initial post, then that'll be enough. And when we get together, we'll discuss these issues. Sound good? I hope so. You can't talk back to me because it's a video. Um, but I just want to point out a few things here to look for as we're going through this. In this A People Called to Ministry section, the chapter 4, uh, this is one vocation, right? He's going to talk about, oh no, in, in 5, A People Called to Discipleship. He's going to talk about vocation. And vocation in exactly the sense, remember the discussion we had with uh, myself and Anne and Celeste, and some things about that. Um, he's really, I think, on the same page as we are, of course, but something that Anne wanted to say after the video, and I think it's right, and we need to understand it, is that While what I said about marriage and about religious life is true, that's not our total self. That is, these, these life commitments, or states of life they're usually called, um, they have a profound effect on us in every part of our lives, but not all of our life. Not, it doesn't completely determine who we are. So there's a me beyond the Dominican me, there's an Anne beyond the married Anne. And she thought maybe we were going too far off in that direction. Or maybe I gave that impression, or maybe I even think that way sometimes. But it's bad thinking. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Whenever we talk about the vocation um, and the universal call to holiness, and that really, I think, as Gallardi says, our vocation as a Christian is to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And we can argue about what being a disciple means, but that is really what we're all called to. And anything else is a secondary way of living that out. Um, so that's my two cents of what to look for in reading this discipleship part. But I think that's important and, and we should talk about this. And I think particularly because, I mean, I think that's what we want to be also getting that message across when we have that firmly in mind in our, our own lives, but to get across to the next generation. The, the primary thing is to be a disciple of Christ, and you got to find the way that you should do it. And, of course, you also have to live and breathe, and, you know, <laughs> there's other things that aren't directly involved with being a disciple of Christ, but they're important, living, breathing, important. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to talk about here Oh, this whole, a people led by ministry of memory. It's really important to see how, how should we think about apostolicity? How are we connected 
to what people have gone and thought in the past? And how can we be one and move forward together in the future? Because not only do we want to move forward together, but we also recognize we only have our faith because it was taught to us. And the generations before passed it along, preserved it, expanded it, because it was so important to them. And it's a blessing that they entrusted to us. So this apostolicity, this um, passing along this memory, is very important. It's, a, it's essential to religion at all. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's fixed, you see. So there's a difference between reverencing what we've been given and mimicking the words that were used before. And it's somewhere in between there where we really need to find our way. And how do you deal with uh, a church that's still changing, but change is always painful, and people, different voices are calling it to change in different ways, or saying, oh no, it should never change, we need to go back to something, like that isn't a change, or like we could be exactly like we were before. So, the, in that last chapter, he's touching on a lot of issues about how do we relate to tradition, and that is a critical, critical question. So as you read that, think about what that sounds like to you, uh, and how that works in the places where you uh, pray and minister, because the other reason why we did the historical treatments at the beginning and saw, you know, in different ages people have believed different things, is so at this point you can really evaluate, well he says this, Gallardi says this, but is that true? Does that really fit with what we've done in the past? And you're at a point now, uh, I hope, no, I, I know it's true, you're at a point now where you can evaluate these criteria and come up with uh, cogent intelligent answers as to why you do disagree or not with Gallardi, or what must you be missing if that's true, or how you would extend it differently, or what it means in our lives. And those are the things that we really want to talk about when we get together. Um, so Gallardi is naming a lot of really interesting, important issues and giving his take on them. I think it's a good take. But the most important thing is to use it as a springboard for our, our own discussion about are these things true and do they matter? Because he's naming a lot of things that are important to the American church. So that's, the, that's what we're doing this week. I look forward to seeing you just one week from now. Ooh. <laughs> um, and if you have any questions, email me. Although the emails are stacked up at the moment, I'll get to them really quickly. Uh, and that's it. Okay, God bless.